Hi everyone, how are you guys tonight? Um, welcome here, you guys are live here on the Dixie Bell Paint Facebook and Instagram pages. My name is Brandy, I am with Brushed by Brandy. I am a furniture painter out of Sacramento, California. And um, I'm a Dixie Bell brand, brand ambassador and I paint here live with you guys every Thursday evening. Um, my husband Sean is here behind the camera to answer any questions. So as you guys have them, pop on and I'm happy to answer any questions as we go about what we're doing or a project you might be working on. I also watch these back later, so if I miss any questions, I'll try to catch those later as well. So if I miss any questions, you'll catch them? Uh, yeah, I, I was being polite by okay. if I miss questions, but I miss... Why are you going to start now? I mean, I'm... Yeah. So anyway, if you guys watched last week, you can go back to the videos tab on the Dixie Bell Paint uh, Facebook or the IGTV, IGTV tab on Instagram, and you can find last week's video but we put a coat of paint on these night scans. And basically all I've done is I finished up that coat of paint and I added a second coat over it. And so that's where I am right here. I did go ahead and seal these in satin clear coat too. Uh, I just wiped on one coat using my blue Gator Hide sponge. And I did that just so that I could come on with you guys tonight and we're gonna accent our paint finish here. Let me show you guys these. Does your paint have an accent? Yes, like a French accent. Uh, my French accent's pretty bad. Yeah, that's yeah. really bad. We don't do French in California. <laughs> they don't even offer it in school anymore, I'm pretty sure. So this is a really pretty paint finish, but when I have a paint finish that I really like, I go ahead and I seal it, and that way my paint is protected, so anything that I put over top, I can now play around with different finishes over the top of this, and my paint is protected. And that's exactly what we're gonna do tonight. I'm gonna put on some waxes, some glaze, we're gonna accentuate this, but if there's anything I don't like, my paint is protected, I can take it right back off again. So let's go ahead and, and do that. Um, I'm, we're gonna work on one of these nightstands. Do you have any preference which one? Oh, should I pay attention? <laughs> yeah, as far as moving the camera, do you Bueller? Care? Okay. No, well, I don't I'm gonna care. I'm gonna come over here because all my stuff is over You're here. You're always in my way that. anyway, it doesn't matter. And then when I step back when we're done, you guys will be able to see the difference between adding the extra accenting products over the paint versus just the paint finish itself. It's a beautiful paint finish, but once you add the additional products, it makes a really big difference. So the first thing I'm gonna play around with is my Dixieville Glaze. And this is a good cue, you guys, for if you're looking for what are, what are my most used products when I want to accent a paint finish. I'm going to tell you guys right now. If I had to choose, I'm going to give you three options. Uh, black glaze, or black glaze, but I like to tint mine with a little bit of coffee bean paint because I like it to be this really dark antique brown. So this is what the black glaze looks like in the container, and this is what I tint it to. I like my black glaze dark because it makes a bigger difference. You can really see the contrast of it. Our black glaze, in the, uh, as it comes, it's very light. Um, it's very subtle. So you can layer it to get it darker, and it's great over when you're painting over light colors because you don't get the that super dark effect right off the bat. But I like to I tint mine, so I keep a container of tinted and a container of regular. Just never satisfied. Never. Never. That's how everyone, you should never be satisfied. It means you're complacent, right? All right, I'm out. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so black glaze is one thing I would suggest. Gold gilding wax. I think I use gold gilding wax to some extent on just about every piece. So we're definitely going to be using some gold gilding wax on these. And black wax. Man, black wax, this is my bread and butter right here. Our black wax is beautiful. I use this to some extent on every piece, again, just like I was saying. So if you have to choose three products to ex accentuate your paint, I would say those are probably the three best ones you can pick. They're really universal. Um, on these pieces, the, the parts that I want to accentuate is I like this rope molding right here. It goes right here, so we're going to accentuate that. I'm going to accentuate this molding that goes along the top here, I've got stained tops, but I went ahead and painted this detail here. And then these keyhole accents right here. So those are a few things I'm gonna accentuate, maybe some waxes, um, just to detail. But I'm gonna start off with glaze. So when would you choose wax versus glaze? Um, a really, I think, universal point for me when I choose wax versus glaze is, it depends on what the details look like. If they're really fine, fine, intricate details, like these keyhole moldings are right here, I prefer to use glaze on those. So we're going to start there. Um, I'm just going to take, this is my bin of, this is my bin of artist brushes. 
they're, I mean, every brand you can get from Dollar Tree to stuff I've ordered off the internet and as actually nicer, natural bristle, synthetic, I mean, every kind of artist brush, I just keep them in this bin. I'm just going to take one out and I'm going to use one of these guys and I'm going to kind of dig my glaze into the details on this molded piece right here. And I'm going to cover the whole thing. You're going to want to get in here. I know. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. Don't sound so overjoyed. I'm going to do this one with the glaze, and I'll show you uh, the other one in the in the black wax, so you can kind of see. I think this is this is a um, a job that these products could do double detail for. So if you had one and not the other, I think you could use black wax for this too. But I'm choosing my black glaze and it's just tinted with a little bit of coffee bean paint. So I get this really pretty antique brown color. So once I've got my glaze on, I'm going to come back with just a dry rag. And don't, don't forget my paint is sealed on this. So whatever I put, it's pretty wipeable. I made my paint nice and wipeable. That's what lets me play over the top of it without the risk of doing damage to my paint finish. So I wiped off what I could with my dry rag. And then I come back with a, a damp, I'm going to use a baby wipe in this case. Baby wipes work great for this. Um, <laughs> I actually use Pampers baby wipes because they're less linty. Like some baby wipes are linty. And I think they they have less lint on them. So I like the Pampers Hey, okay, don't be offended. I'm taking you out of the picture so uh, as get usual. on in. Was my hair bad tonight or something? Um, when you tint the glaze with a little bit of paint, it does have a tendency to set up faster. So when I tint my glazes, I make sure that I work in a smaller area. You can actually take any of the Dixie Belle glazes and tint them. So if you get, say, Van Dyke brown and you want it to be more of a rich antique brown, you can tint the glaze yourself. If you get the pearl glaze and you wanted it to be like a soft pink or something, you could tint it with, say, a little bit of... Um, T rose. The glazes are tintable. You can use them like a glaze medium and make custom glazes yourself. So then I just take my baby wipe and I, I want to leave some of this. I don't want to wipe it back really clean. So I just take my baby wipe and I'm going to wipe all the excess glaze around it. And it really, you can see here from one that doesn't have the glaze on it to one that does how it brings out all the details and the character that's in that mold just by adding the dark and the low points. So then I told you we were gonna do another one in black wax. So actually I'm going to just, um, I'm gonna So leave. Sheila. Hey, welcome back, Sheila. Once in a while, you get baby wipes that aren't so sudsy. Linty, so linty. That too. Um, like maybe too much liquid in there or... Yeah, you know... Uh, sometimes you got to wring them out. Well, I also mm -hmm. think like mine usually sit in my workspace for a long time. So it could just be when they're super new. So I don't know. Let your stuff sit around your house. You probably need to be a hoarder. Just let stuff sit around your house. Um, because I don't think these are too wet. But these are, this package is a little bit old. I've had it open for, I don't know, a couple months. This will last me. So it's not a new package either. So to take, also to take you back a step when you're uh, mixing, how much glaze to paint? So I try to keep it as minimal to uh, paint as possible. I don't want my glaze to become paint. It's just tinting again, when you're just tinting something. So I would say in an eight ounce container like this, I mean, I start off slow until I get the color you want, but what starts to happen if you add too much paint, it becomes more paint-like than glaze-like. Um, and I don't want to lose the characteristics of the glaze, that light translucency of a glaze and um, the dry time of a glaze. Already just adding the little bit of paint, it starts to set up quicker. So I would say as minimal as possible that you can and still get the color that you want. Um, Okay, I'm doing this one down here using the Dixie Belle Black Wax. I actually really like this, you guys. Now, just for Michelle's sake, you mix the paint with what? I mix paint with the, the Dixie Belle Black Glaze. So there these... we go. She's playing it. She wants to play a drinking game every time you hit glaze. So. Oh, <laughs> dang it. I'm like, oh, that's a great question, Michelle. Never mind. <laughs> Woo. Now I need to find a synonym for the word. Yeah. Glaze. <laughs> 
Oh, we're going French again. French. Now, did you seal these pieces? Yes, these have a one coat of satin clear coat that I wiped on with the blue gator hide sponge. I just did wipe, 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 sealed all of it with one coat. Then I'm going to finish all this and I'm going to seal it again. And that sandwiches all of my decorative finishes underneath a coat of clear. So I've got my paint protected right now. And then I can come back and seal it again. And all this, all these details that I'm adding will be protected underneath a coat of clear as well. So that's what I usually do. I usually sandwich all my decorative finishes. That's what I'm going to call these decorative finishes under a coat of clear coat. All right, so that's my black wax. I actually really like that. It's very similar. I don't think you could tell a lot of the difference other than maybe the color because this is a little more brown because it's tinted with coffee bean. I could tint it with caviar if I wanted to, which is a true black. And my black wax is a true black. So Dixie Belle waxes are water-based. So anywhere that I got a little bit of shadowing around the molding that I didn't want, I can just come back and same thing with my baby wipe. So it's really the same process on something like that, whether I'm using black wax or the black glaze. So you can see now the difference between that once I've added that and a, the plain molding. So then what I would do on something like this is I'm going to take my gold gilding wax. I just open it with a screwdriver and I just apply this with my finger. So that's what the gold gilding wax looks like. It's a solid, it's a very soft wax. Um, the gilding wax is oil-based, but I will still seal the oil-based gilding wax with my water-based clear coat because I'm just gonna use it on little tiny points like this keyhole. If I was using it on say an all over application, I would not wanna seal with water-based clear coat over top, but I just am using it on these little details here. So I, don't, I do it all the time. I've never had a problem with it. And I'm just going to use my finger and accentuate some of these points on this molding here. You can apply as much or as little as you want. If you get too much on, um, because this is oil-based, you can remove it with another oil. So I, I use my Big Mama's Butter a lot. I'll just dip it a little finger in Big Mama's Butter and then come back and I can remove any excess gilding wax that I've gotten anywhere I didn't want it. Once it's dry? Yeah, uh, it doesn't matter. Even right after I've done it. So that's really pretty. That really brought out these keyhole moldings. And now I've got three color layers. So I've got the dark in the lowest point. I've got my paint finish. And then I've got the gilding wax on top. And it gives me three layers of color in here that give it extra depth and dimension. Let's go ahead and do this uh, molding up here at the top. I actually kind of like the true black of the black wax. So I might go ahead and just do, do this in black wax. So this is just like a rope detail along the top. So whenever I have a wood stain top like this here, I'm not gonna try to strip this to match the wood stain top. It just would be extremely labor intense. It's not worth it. It's still a pretty look to just um, paint this and then do just the flat portion in the wood stain. Um, on the top here, I used um, Voodoo Gel Stain and Tobacco Road is what that is. Over the, I sanded it back to raw wood and then put on the voodoo gel stain. So that's my top. Um, I'm just using my same artist brush and I'm just putting on a coat of black wax, but I'm making sure that I get coverage inside these crevices here because that's where I really want it to stay. All right, and once I've got it in all those low points, I'm gonna come back with my rag. This is my dry rag and I'm gonna wipe it back of the high points. So I'm just gonna do this, this one side here because that'll show you guys the difference. And then I've left the black wax on this. So over here, it's just stayed in the low points of the carving. And now you can really see those details. And then I'm just gonna come back with my baby wipe again because I want to keep my paint color true. I'm not going for a full black wax look. I just want it to sit in those low points. The glaze would also work for this. So I switched to the black wax because I wanted the true black. I kind of like the contrast of the true black on these. 
Plus, I also know that the customer that I'm doing these for has a the bed frame that the room, the bed frame in the room these are going in is a black bed frame. So I think the true black is probably the better choice. Okay, so that is that carving right there. I'm not gonna add any gold gilding marks to this, I think, but that looks pretty. Um, I'm, I also wanna go ahead and do this rope right here is the other point I wanna accentuate. So I just go through and pick out the points on here that I wanna make a detail out of. This kind of has some little carvings in it, so I just make sure that I'm digging the black wax into there. Neither one, Gary. Thanks, though. What? <clears throat> oh, did I leave because the camera was still? Oh. Or did I fall asleep? Uh, so you guys, we're in California. We've had we've been having earthquakes all day. Uh, let's see. So far, there's been like seven, but the biggest one was a 5.9, and actually got us all up, like running to each other in the house making sure the kids were okay. Nothing, uh, no damage or anything, but that's a pretty big, that's a pretty good size earthquake. Did any of you guys feel them? Someone messaged me, because I posted it, and someone messaged me and said, I'm in New Jersey, we didn't feel them. <laughs> I'm so glad, <laughs> so relieved. I like them already. <laughs> um, and then I just want it to stay in this crevice right here, so I kind of hold my finger at like a 45 degree angle, because I don't want to wipe the wax back out where I just put it on. So I'm just gonna hold my uh, rag at like a 45 degree angle and I'm gonna just wipe back just so it stays in that crevice. And same thing on the underside. I'm gonna pull this drawer out so I can get in here better. And my rag starts looking pretty dirty. So now to take it a step back, do you have your colors listed? I do, I actually put them, I put them in the Facebook post. Once the Instagram post is up, I can I complete the description on there and I'll add the colors there too. My colors on these so far though, I'll go over with you guys one time really quick. Um, I've got uh, Dixie Belle Midnight Sky is my darkest color. Then it fades into a mix that's three colors. It's Palmetto, Antebellum Blue about 50-50, and then Midnight Sky just to darken it. So that's my mix. And then in the center, I struggled with on, on uh, my live last week what color to put in the centers. I ended up adding a little bit of French linen. I started out with a blue last week and it was it looked too blue. So I ended up using a little bit of French linen in the center and that's this little highlight that you have here. There will be a video on these because I did video myself painting all of it. Um, if you guys follow my YouTube channel, I put out a, a video on there every week, but it's usually a couple weeks behind what I'm actually working on because I've got to finish the video and edit it and get photos of the piece. And obviously these aren't complete yet. So these videos, huh won't be up for nobody a felt it in ontario or what? north carolina what or wisconsin and <laughs> sheila this is for you you mentioning this here this <laughs> sheila has eagle eyes she finds all the flaws <laughs> in my work it just makes me feel like how horrible this space is like i have all these dings and nicks those aren't showing on camera by the way let's not point <laughs> yeah, out those. i can point them all out to you because i lean my furniture up against the wall and it dings and nicks and then i just have to come back with my dixie mud and fill holes all the time all right, so I wanna do a little bit of shading with waxes on this too. So I'm gonna use my besting wax, but you'll notice I have two containers of besting wax in black. One is old and it's dried out and hardened a little bit and I love it. It is priceless to me. And then I've got a newer container that's much softer, although it's it's getting on its way. This is gonna be my next dried out container, I think. Um, and I like this because when I'm deliberately placing wax, I like it to be a little bit more dried out and it stays in place better. I mean, my personal preference, I, I, I like the older one. You shouldn't concern yourself with the younger one. Pay attention. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know. The know, older it, one is the preferred uh, method. Best thing wax is like a fine wine. It gets better with age, right? And then I'm just using a natural bristle artist brush and I'm kind of just, I'm just going to shade the corners a little bit. I'm just adding a little soft bit of black wax and then I'm just going to buff off the ex excess. Now, when you top coat this, yes, 
Is it going to affect anything? Yeah, so when you, you add deliberate waxes like this, okay? This is a water-based wax, so when you come back with a clear coat, let me find a brush. Any brush will do. Yeah, when you're brushing your clear coat, you're going to create friction. It's going to be a water base on a water base. You'll, it'll have a tendency to pull that wax back off. Here's my solution to it. I spray my clear coats. I'm waiting for it. You spray your clear coats? <laughs> not, not this week? No. Not feeling it? All right. Uh, I spray my clear coats. That solves the problem 100%. Um, if not, and I have a video for this on my YouTube channel too, but um, if you use a roller, you can use a roller. That does not create the friction that, that brushing does. Um, if you're going to do a brushing, I prefer the Dixie Bell Synthetic Brushes and a very soft hand. Get a coat on there and that will give you a barrier. I do not recommend using the Gator Hide sponge. That's the most friction. You're going to just pull your waxes right back off. It's like a wipe. It just wipes them right back off. So choose the method that gives you the least amount of friction if you want to leave a very deliberate wax in place. Those are my recommendations there. I even like black wax over dark colors. So even on these edges here where I've got the midnight sky, I'm all about subtlety. You know, I'm not a super like loud painter. None of my finishes are very loud. I love subtleties. How do you ditch a troll? <laughs> On where? I got one. Uh, you can uh, block. The comments aren't needed. Yeah, don't worry. We'll get rid of you. Hey, jack wagon. Yeah, we'll get rid of you. That's my specialty. Even if I have to wait till I get off to do it, you will be gone and blocked. To never come back again. Uh, I have a pretty no tolerance policy for neg negativity. Even on my pages, I feel like once it starts, if you leave it and respond to it, it just makes a culture of it. So we are all about zero tolerance for negativity. All right, so a little bit of black wax is just on the edges right there. I also want to add a little bit of gold gilding wax to this center row right here. And I think I'm just going to do the little buttons. Thank you, Dixie Bell. Thank you. <laughs> Sheila, it's not me. Let's get it straight. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's never you, Sheila. We know. But Sheila, we should honestly have you just removing the people for us. That should be a jo your job at this point. So I'm just using my finger and I'm pl applying a little bit of gold gilding wax. I don't know. Maybe I can. Let's see if I like a little bit more. That's kind of pretty, too. So I have very little on my finger and I can just kind of pull it and it gives this, waxes give this really soft, smeary, smudgy effect. And glaze doesn't do that. So that's what I tend to use my waxes a lot more than I use glazes, but I do love glazes in really fine details. So I'm just kind of uh, accenting each of these little notches here with a little bit of the gold. And then I'll show you in a second what the hardware looks like. It's really going to make this gold make sense. So this is all the detail work that comes after the paint. So even once you finish your paint, you've got your paint finish on, you have the option of leaving it or do you want to add more to it? And then there's all these accentuating products. A transfer would be really pretty on this finish. These are not going to get a transfer, but I could see a transfer on this finish because it's kind of a blank canvas. But I think just adding a little bit to these moldings. <laughs> I wanted to ask what's a troll. So Emily came on and said, they live under a bridge. <laughs> yeah, they need to go back there. But a boom. <laughs> All right, I, I mean, I think I'm gonna keep it simple. I don't wanna to get too gaudy with the gold because these are pretty, more of a refined piece. Of course, I like the really fun ones where I can get over the top sparkly, but these are not that. Let me show you what my hardware looks like. Oh, you guys, up here in this uh, section right here, it has these uh, pullouts. They're these guys that are like pullout tables. And I need to, um, I, I at first thought I was going to stain these, but now I'm thinking I might paint them. And so I just need to finish these. So I went ahead and pulled them out of my frame. They just had little dowels that were stuck into the bottom, and I pulled the dowels out, and that's how those came out. So that's what's missing from those tops right there. 
Um, oh, hardware. So these are my pulls right here. So you guys can help me right here on this because my customer was on the fence about whether to do black pulls on this or uh, keep them gold. I think the gold stands out really pretty against these colors. I'm worried the black would get uh, lost, lost yeah. in the dark. I mean, I don't want to throw out my, you know, my professional opinion and all. I think it would be optional to put another bead of the gold around this bottom lip here. So I always try to balance things out. I like groups of threes when I'm playing with colors. So here's where I've got my gold. I've got one, two, three points. I could put one down here. Um, if we weren't considering the hardware as one, I could put some gold down here and I think that would be pretty too. It would kind of balance this out, but I don't want to do too much. I really it's like so the weird. Nobody likes these. the gold at all. Really? I'm kidding. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> all about it. <laughs> what? Did I totally call this wrong? Because I, I went ahead and painted these. These are just spray painted and coated in a clear lacquer. Um, is all I've done to my hardware. But I just lost. Oh. It went under. It went under. So I don't know. I don't want to add a whole lot more. So I think that's a really pretty. So let's, let's turn to the side because I do have some things in here that I want to do some shading with my waxes. Oh, you're really so shady. I'm going to turn this. I like how that front is looking though. I don't think I would change anything on that front. Um, at this point, I'm liking the black wax over my glaze. So I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on my glaze and we're just going to work with the wax. So I'll do this guy here. This is that same molding we did around the front. Black wax making sure I get it into all these crevices so it matches the front. And then I wanna shade out these frames right here too that are on the sides. Um, I love black wax for shading. Oh, nothing, I'm just, I know <laughs> she's in there and she can see it, so. You need to laser we're back. Paint. We're back to this right here. What, that paint spot on my yeah. wall? Yeah, yeah, I just know it's coming. It's a paint splatter. Colombo here. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, I love adding black wax shading when I've got flat panels. You can use shading to add di dimension when you've got an otherwise pretty flat surface. And you're not sure you want to go too crazy with your finishes. Black wax is a nice way that you can shade it without going over the top. I ask you a random here. Um, Don't you always? Yeah. Uh, that's that's true like 18 years ago anyway <laughs> yeah. um that's when oh, it, it started is. oh speaking of which it's almost yeah. our anniversary in yeah, case yeah. you were thinking about forgetting uh, i huh it's coming up next month that's weird it's almost exactly a month um oh it's in august <laughs> yeah surprise <laughs> surprise um if you've already painted a piece is it yes. too late to add molds uh no you don't ha no uh, when you're adding moldings um, it's kind of optional. So you can either paint them as part of your paint finish on the body of your piece, or you can paint them separately off your piece and then glue them on. So you could sp you spray paint them gold or whatever, or paint them <laughs> your, the color that your body is finished in and then glue them on when they're painted already. That's completely personal preference. I don't find one way or the other works any better. I usually paint them as part of my overall paint finish so it just looks cohesive. There's no um, gaps or anything. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my dried out besting wax and I'm gonna shade out these frames that are on the side. So I've got this skinny guy here, which is just a natural bristle artist brush. Oops. I'm gonna dip it in some of my dried out besting wax. And I'm just gonna ride. So let's see, today's the eighth. Can you remind me in about a month? <laughs> somebody, I got I to gotta set okay, a, a calendar. Somebody here. Add, add a calendar option yeah. for Sean, a calendar item. Somebody blow my phone up a couple weeks. Not that we celebrate. I'd love to say we were going anywhere, but like travel, although. Not all of us can be like Sheila. Although, you guys, if you've been waiting for a class with Brush by Brandy. You wanna pay attention because there will be an announcement coming up soon. What? That's all I can say right now. I can't huh? say the, the when and the where. Okay, so now I'm taking this uh, other pretty beat up natural bristle artist brush. I think I tend to like things when they get more beat up. 
and I'm just smudging this out because I don't want those harsh lines that I just created, but I'm gonna soften them. I added the wax to the surface and now I'm just using this one to soften it. And then I even wanna take off even more than that. And I'm just gonna use my rag and buff it away. Love that. Just a little subtle shading around the frame of that. Oh man. <laughs> Did I Fireball say too June, much? Yeah. Sheila. Yep. Uh, yep. You guys, yeah. I'm telling you, uh, we uh I had a conference call today. <laughs> it's on the road with Brush by Brandy coming up. Yep. Uh well yeah. What? Um yeah, she lets uh in your neck it's of the woods. It's on a moped. It's in your neck of the woods. So I think you're a Fireball June, I can't remember where you Moped are. Moped with a sidecar. June, where, tell me where you are. What state are you in again? <laughs> Refresh my memory. <laughs> anyway, keep your eyes peeled. It's coming soon. We just uh, found out today that we're even going to talk about it. So, huh? yep. I was there. I heard it. But I'm not going to tell you the details. Yeah. And it's not just me. Oh, it's just you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, it is. I mean, I'm not the center of the universe. Turns out. It's not just me, guys. It's not just me. Taking this show mobile. Oh, FBJ is uh, 40 minutes from Sheila in Toledo, Ohio. Okay. Uh, I'll, have to, I'll, I'll have to map you guys and see how close. So that's coming up. Um, once I know details of how we're going to tell you guys about it. I'll tell you guys about it. I just told them what it was. You want a moped <laughs> with a sidecar. Taking this show on the road. Sean will not be in attendance for all of you that were super hesitant <sighs> just then. Sean's staying home with the kids. Actually, now people just get excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tickets, Dang it. tickets are selling like hotcakes all of a sudden. It's a good one. It's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, Daddy Amen. watches the kids while I travel. So travel's been really uh, prohibitive. Even classes have been prohibitive. I'm in California, and California has been one of the most restrictive states. I work from my home, so I obviously don't teach classes out of my home. I have to partner with a, a physical location to be able to do it, and um, nothing's open. So, so but other states are a little more liberal than California is. So you know, we'll just leave California. And then... The Monday morning announcement. I don't know. I don't know yet, guys. I don't know. Just uh, keep your ears peeled because I'm thinking next week. I'm thinking next week I can spill the beans. I mean, I don't want to, you know, throw out the obvious here, but Monday would be part of next week. <laughs> yeah, part of. Part I know. Of. But then there's yeah. extensions of next week called Tuesday, huh? Wednesday, and then there's a uh, Thursday. Shall I keep going? So anyway, it's coming. It's coming. All right, so very, 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 very subtle, but I cannot stress enough how much difference the subtleties make in, in a paint finish. It's all those things that you think are so pretty when you see a photo and you don't know how they did them. These are the products they use to do them. It's the waxes, it's the glazes, it's the things that go over the paint sometimes that give you all those effects. You try not to touch the carpet. Yeah, no, nobody wants to touch this carpet. I mean, I want to throw the carpet in the garbage, but no. but then it's so functional. It's so functional. Like if I need to watch this, this wax brush has too much Wait, wax what? on it. Watch that on the carpet. <gasps> Look at that. It's all it's clean now. living room now. carpet, oh, Mom. I, I know, it's going back in the house when we're done with this. That's my hairbrush. <laughs> okay. So same thing, I just outlined, that just puts the wax on my surface and then I just take this guy and smudge it, smear it, soften those edges a little bit. That one's a little too harsh. I had a little bit of heavy wax up there. That's okay, because then I just take it off with that rag and I buff it back again. So up here where I feel like it's a little heavy, I just buff it back again. Put it on, take it off. Put it on, take it off. That's a lot of what waxes are. 
And then I'm actually going to bring it out even a little bit further from the edges. I so again, the colors in the paint, uh, my paint are up above. My paint colors are in the post, but it's a mix of palmetto, antebellum blue, midnight sky, midnight sky to darken it, and then um, a little bit of French linen. All right. I will have a video coming out so you guys can see how I got the paint finished too. You guys will see all of it. I got pretty detailed on it too, so hopefully that helps. Um, the video that I have coming out tomorrow on my YouTube channel, we're doing like a faux exaggerated butcher block finish. It's really pretty. Came out really cool. It's kind of a masculine, uh, clean line finish. So that'll be out tomorrow on my YouTube channel. I added a little bit of my black wax down there. I'm going to leave it at this. I feel like this little bit of soft gold, I don't want to go overboard on this. I like the uh, little bit of wax on the frames. I'm going to leave it at this. So these are going in a guest bedroom. There'll be these in a matching dresser. Okay, so let's turn this back to the front. Woo! I'm stuck on my stupid carpet over there. There we go. Okay, so this will be my um, overall paint finish. Of course, with all my hardware, once I get it all put together. All right. What do you guys think? So those are my three recommendations. If you have to pick any three products to accentuate your paint finish, black wax, gold gilding wax, black glaze. Um, I mean, I, I probably use it more than a lot of things in the line. So you'll see those a lot when I post pieces. Those are what I use on top of my paint the most often. So what do you guys think? That's all right. Yeah, you're sorry? Right? Yeah. Another, another satisfied customer. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and pop off and let you guys go to your weekend. Thank you so much for hanging out on another Thursday with us. I will post all the colors um, at the top of this post. Um, but if you guys want to uh, check out anything that I used in this video or any of the things used on this finish, I put my link above in the post. I always appreciate purchases made through my link. Um, you can also use that link to find a retailer in your area. If you want to go in and visit a shop that carries any of these products, you can use that find a retailer function too. Um, I have a new video on my YouTube channel coming out. So go subscribe at Brush by Brandy um, on YouTube. And a new tutorial comes out with the paint every week. You guys get to see start to finish a full tutorial. Um, and other than that, I hope you guys had a great fourth. I'm going to let you guys go and have a happy weekend. Thank you.